Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 25th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Sins of the Father. And our scripture is Jeremiah's Prophecy, chapter 31. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will greatly increase the human population and the number of animals here in Israel and Judah. In the past, I deliberately uprooted and tore down this nation. I overthrew it, destroyed it, and brought disaster upon it. But in the future, I will just as deliberately plant it and build it up. I, the Lord, have spoken." The people will no longer quote the proverb, The parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouths pucker at the taste. All people will die for their own sins. Those who eat the sour grapes will be the ones whose mouths will pucker. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This text was the focus of study in this past Sunday's lesson at church. That phrase about children experiencing puckered mouths because their parents ate some sour grapes became a well-known idiom of that time, largely due to sin's judgment affecting an entire family. It was Old Testament law, Exodus chapter 20. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. This is repeated again in Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But Jeremiah said that was all coming to an end. God's special people would be responsible individually for their sins. No longer would judgment extend to the Son for the sins of the Father. The inverse would also be true. No longer could there be an automatic benefit of righteousness because you were born into a household of the righteous. Each individual would bear the judgment of his or her own actions. That was welcome news to the Israelites born during the Babylonian captivity. They had been born slaves due to the sins of their ancestors. Now they were to be a restored nation. In his day, Jeremiah delivered mostly unwelcome news, judgment, a message of gloom and doom approaching because of sin. Often called the weeping prophet, Jeremiah's prophecies were the main reason he spent a good deal of time in jail. What king likes to hear everything that he does is more cause for God to bring the hammer down? Well, the ultimate message was one of great news and blessing. There was a new covenant of grace on the rise. Jeremiah 31, verses 33 and 34. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. That's the way it is with prophecy. Sovereign God does what a sovereign God does rule over his people and for his people. A loving, grace-filled, mercy-loving God does that which is righteous and best. He fulfilled that promise on Calvary's cross. For you today, we live in a sometimes brutal world where people experience repressive forms of brutal government. Those who live in democratically governed countries know an individual freedom that scoffs at the notion we might suffer judgment for a parent's sins or anyone else's. Truth told, we may experience the effect of a parent's substance abuse or the weight of a sibling, spouse, or child's irresponsible or cruel behavior, but God's hand will never be that. His Spirit may convict us of our own sins, but never those of our neighbor. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.